Well, happy old year, dear saints. Happy last day of December, the 31st of December today. And what a better way to leave this year behind than on the hope and the promise of Isaiah chapter 60. Good news, hope, promise, God's abundance, because he continues to keep his promise and bless his repentant people. We'll get to that in just a moment. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, the psalm for today, Psalm 111, the first six verses and verse 10. Hear the word of the Lord for this last day of 2021. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. In the company of the upright, in the congregation, great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them, full of splendor and majesty in his works, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous work to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who hear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the inheritance of the nations. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. That's the psalm for today. He has shown his power to the people of his works. And his power in the psalm and his power in Isaiah is how he continues to bless them. How he builds up the city of Jerusalem. How he restores his people. But just look ahead 2,000 years. How has God shown us his power? He has taken his dear son, put him on the cross. He has taken our sin and put that on Jesus He has died, Jesus has died for our sin, given us his holiness, and then rises from the dead victorious over that sin that condemned and damned him. That is God's power and his mercy for you. Well, Isaiah chapter 60 is our text for today. And at the end of the year, this is a great verse for us, a great section for us. Because it's hopeful, and it's full of promise, and it's full of the gospel of our Lord. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And the nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried on the hip. And you shall see and be radiant, and the heart shall thrill and exult. Because of the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, young camels of Midian and Ephah and those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall bring good news, the praise of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall gather to you, the rams of Neboth shall minister to you. They shall come up with acceptance on my altar and I will beautify my beautiful house. Who are these that fly like a cloud and like doves in their windows? For the coastlands shall hope for me, the ships of Tarshish first, to bring your children from afar, then silver and gold with them, for the name of the Lord your God and from the Holy One of Israel, because he has made you beautiful. Foreigners shall build up your walls and their kings shall minister to you. For in my wrath I struck you, but in my favor I have had mercy on you. Your gates shall be open continually, day and night they shall not be shut. The people may bring to you the wealth of the nations, 
with their kings led in procession. For the, ki- for the nations and the kingdoms that will not serve you shall perish. Those nations shall be utterly laid waste. The glory of Lebanon shall come to you, the cypress, the plain, and the pine, the, to the beauty of the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. The son of those who afflicted you shall come bending low to you, and all who despised you shall bow down at your feet. They shall call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas you have been forsaken and hated with no one passing through, I will make your name majestic forever, a joy from age to age. You shall suck the milk of nations and shall nurse at the breasts of kings. You shall know that I, the Lord, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Instead of bronze, I will bring gold. Instead of iron, I will bring silver. Instead of wood, bronze. Instead of stones, iron. I will make your overseers peace and your taskmasters righteousness. Violence shall no more be heard in your land. Devastation and destruction within your borders. You shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise. The sun shall be no more, your light by day nor for your brightness shall be the moon to give you light. But the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Your son, will sh- your, son, your son shall no more go down, nor your moon withdraw itself. For the Lord will be the everlasting light, and your days of mourning shall be ended. Your people shall bring righteousness. They shall possess the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I might be glorified. The least one shall become a clan, and the smallest one a mighty nation. I am the Lord. It is in time I will hasten it. This is the word of the Lord. Well, we've heard a lot of Isaiah already, and a lot of Isaiah has a lot to do with repentance, with trying to bring God's people back so that he might continue to be their God and they his people, which truly means we, God's people, need to repent. To live in pride, to live in arrogance, to uh, live in piety, thinking that if I just do these things, God will be happy without real faith or real repentance there. God uses the Babylonians and later the Assyrians to challenge his people so that they might continue to repent and turn back to him. In our day, he uses the struggles of the world around us, a world that's an unheaval, uh, a world that's in upheaval, and a world that continues to try to push us away from the promises of God. But like Israel, repented and remained. So also today, we repent and remain in God's promises. And As we do that, what is our hope? Well, our hope is written here. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you, and nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. You see, this whole chapter is a chapter of abundance. Not abundance that we have earned, not a prosperity gospel, but an abundance of the God of God's that gives all he has to his people. As we repent, as as we are repentant children living in the king's family, the inheritance of everything he has is ours. And that's what chapter 6 does. Everything is continually increasing. Good is better. Best is even better than best. Instead of silver, instead of wood and bronze, instead of stones of iron, I will make Uh, Excuse me, I have to back up. Instead of bronze, I will bring gold. Instead of iron, I will bring silver. Instead of wood, bronze. Instead of stones, iron. Everything is increased. What we have will be given to us even greater by the God of abundance and the God of mercy. You see, what he talks about in here is, is all of these things that have been oppressing God's people are now going to be helping God's people. 
The ones that have torn down the city of Jerusalem will be there building the walls. The oppressors that hauled people away will be using their camels to bring nations back. The sea will be in abundance. God's people will have a name. Zion, the Holy One of Israel. Do you see the greatness? Do you see the abundance? Do you see the promises of God being fulfilled? As you read through the last parts of chapter 60, it has echoes of Revelation chapter 20. Echoes of a time when God will come and stand upon the earth. And there will be no sun in the stars and no sun in the sky because God's risen sun will be our light. And the nations will come to him. Isaiah chapter 60 as it gets very near the end of Isaiah, is again, just like Revelation, the end of time when God will restore all of his repentant people to himself. Dear saints, that's us. God's children. Brought into the kingdom through the waters of baptism, forced to repent through the preaching of the law and the law convicting us of our sin. And then in our repentance... God is merciful to us. He points us to the cross to see that our sin died there and that we are no longer condemned by that. He points us to the cross so that we might see clearly that Jesus died and took away everything that should damn us and then raised us up as a holy nation, made us righteous and holy with his own holiness and gives us the promise now that he will be with us. And that's certainly the theme of chapters 60 through the end of the book, that God is with us. He makes that note in here that Israel will have a name and they will be called Zion and the people of God. Well, we have that name. And that name was given to us in the water of baptism, child of God, or as I refer to you all the time, dear saints. You see, the promises of our, the promises of God are ours. Not by work, not by might, not by great piety and pride, but out of repentance and trusting in our Father. He has given us all of these gifts of life and health and daily bread and forgiveness of sins and the promise that one day when this is all over, He will take us home to be with Him. There is no greater way to end the year 2021 than with these great promises. Our Lord is with us. He will continue to be with us now and always. And one day, as he says, I am the Lord in its time, I will hasten it. He will bring us home to be with him. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, you know the question, where in the catechism Do we see the things that we've heard? Where in the catechism do we see this abundance? Where in the catechism do we see God keeping his promises? Well, let's go to the end of the Lord's Prayer. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. What does this mean? This means that I should be certain that these petitions are pleasing to our Father in heaven and are heard by him. For he himself has commanded us to pray in this way and has promised to hear us. Amen, amen means yes, yes, it shall be so. We pray. Father, as we close out this year that you have given to us, we pray that you would continue to show your mercy upon us. We ask, Father, that as we trust in you at the close of this year and at the beginning of the next, that you would strengthen us and continue to keep us in repentance, that we may trust in you in all things. Father, bless us in the coming year. Be with us in all the things that we do, that we may continue to hold and trust in you. We thank you for the year that is past, and that you would continue to show your favor upon us. Hear us now for the sake of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass upon us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, dear saints, have a blessed New Year's Eve today and an even more blessed first day of 2022 tomorrow. Go in his peace. Thanks be to God.